Hey everybody, welcome back to sunny Florida, the uh, channel. A little bit chilly today though. We a little got, bit. That cold front's hitting us. We're at what, like 40 some degrees right now? And we're, we're pushing, trying to push 50, but it ain't gonna make it. It's gonna be cold tonight. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So today we are bringing you guys a mini series on this really amazing company called Yolink that has a whole bunch, a wide range of sensors for your RV. We're both full-time uh, fifth wheel livers. Yeah. So sensors are very important to us, especially when you're living full-time. If you're away from your RV, if you work a job, you want to know what's going on in your RV all the time. Yeah, when, when we first started this, or it was actually I first started it, I was looking for something to make the RV smart, and I came across this company. Yes. I bought a couple of their items and it, it worked awesome. Yeah, it's and, absolutely fantastic. Haven't yeah. had any problems and it's just a peace of mind knowing that when you're not there, uh, you'll know if there's a leak, uh, you'll know if a door yeah. opens, you have sirens, there's there's a wide range of stuff. So in a minute guys, we will show you everything we have here on the table. Yolink was nice enough to send us a bunch of products to kind of display to you guys some of the possibilities and things you can get for your RV to kind of give you that peace of mind, safety, security. And these are much more affordable than some of them other companies you might know the name brands of, but this does the same thing at a fraction of the price. Yeah, but being affordable, don't think like it's, yeah, it's, it's nothing. nothing. Like yeah. These things have worked fantastic. It's not like we just, like we've been using the product for months already. Like uh, Over a year I have. Yeah, and I'm over like six or seven months. So we've been using them for a while. We stand behind them. So again, thank you Yolink for sending us some stuff. This is thank gonna you. be awesome. Uh, so over the span of the next few videos, we're gonna be showing you guys some of the products and uh, what they're used for, how to install so, them, what you can expect. How and, to use the app and everything like that. Yeah, and then hopefully through our videos, you can find what you might want to add to your RV to kind of make it a smart home. Exactly, and, and like we said, this ain't just for your RV, but we're concentrating on that because that's what we're doing, but mm -hmm. you could use these in your home if, if that's what you choose to do. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna snag that camera and give you guys a nice close up of everything we have here and give you a quick rundown of what it can do. And, and then we'll jump into uh, installing one of these products. Yeah, this is not, this is only a small reputation of what they have. They have, yeah, they a have lot a of lot stuff. of other stuff. And this they're is just some of it. Constantly adding more stuff. Yeah, so if, if they're nice enough to send us more and that comes in, we'll show you guys that also. But uh, we're gonna show you what we got here so far. All right, so we have everything laid out here on the table that we're gonna be showing you guys over the next few videos. Uh, one thing we wanna start off with is Yolink has kits. So this was the first thing we got. It was a Yolink hub and then three of these water leak sensors. This hub is really amazing because once you get one, you're pretty much set. It can hold over 300 different sensors onto one hub, over 30 different products. So it's gonna be super simple. Once you have one of these installed, you don't have to worry about getting another one. You're gonna be set. So this is kind of the brains to all the devices. Everything will kind of link to this. So you'll be able to connect with your app and see all the status of everything. So I'm gonna go through here, give you guys a quick explanation of what it is and what you would probably be using it for. So over here in this far corner here, we have contact sensors, I'll show you guys. So these right here are good when you're in your RV or fifth wheel because you can put it outside in like a storage bay. So if the door opens or it's ripped open, you know, security kind of reasons, you can have an alert right on your phone. It can set off a siren, things of that nature. So these are really good for outside of your RV in case you're not there. Or if the wind happened to blow open your door, like you'll, you'll want to know if it's open. Okay, scooching over a little bit more, we have the water and temperature well, weatherproof temperature and humidity sensors right here. These are really good because you can kind of place these outside uh, of your RV to kind of track the temperature. Uh, when you're RV living, you have to be very cautious if the temperature is dropping below freezing because you don't want your pipes or anything to freeze. So by having these out here, you can kind of get an idea of what your storage bay may be uh, underneath your RV. So that way, if it's dropping below a certain temperature, you know, hey, I have to click on my heated hose or I'll have to run the furnace to keep that bay warm. So a few of these, definitely good to have. Then we have a weatherproof temperature sensor. These are good for things if you're in an RV where the fridge runs off of what, propane? And electric, yeah. And electric, so that way you can actually wire this right into your fridge, freezer, so you can always kind of keep an idea of what the temperature is in there, so that way you don't spoil all your food. Yeah, those are notorious for having issues with temperature, and this this is just a probe you stick in the door. It's just really simple. Yeah, so super easy, but you're gonna really appreciate it in case, you know, power goes out, you run out of propane, you don't lose all your food when you're gone. Scooching over a little bit more, we have the Yolink Hub. As I was talking about this earlier, you get this once, this just plugs right in. 
power, and then you're also it does have a Cat5 adapter uh, to plug directly into your router if you chose to go that route, but it also is wireless. So for us, we have it wireless. Then scooching on down, we have the water leak sensors, which these things are absolutely fantastic. Uh, in your RV, you can place them uh, behind a toilet, under a sink. You could put it in the storage bay, under your shower. I love those things. That's the first thing I've bought because water kill an RV in a hurry. And we'll show you guys a little bit more in the video that we explain these, but there's two little prongs in the top and prongs in the bottom. So if any moisture actually touches it, it will communicate with your Yellowlink hub and you can set up a wide range of things to happen, almost like commands. So like if this were to detect water, uh, you could have a siren go off. They do have other devices that can shut the water off to your unit. So there's a whole bunch of possibilities you can do. So you can kind of change, uh, chain these things to do a certain something when something else happens, which is fantastic. Get out of here, bug. Okay, next we have door sensors. Uh, as you could probably imagine, these are good for your RV. You can tell if your front door opens. You also could probably use these for some of your bay doors, I guess, on the outside of your RV, just to know if they're open or closed. But they would uh, also work on like windows, I think, too. Or they might even have window ones. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I would. These are more indoor, though, so these are probably a better choice if you're going on the outside of your RV, just in case it does get <laughs> introduced to water. Okay, then we have a speaker hub. Uh, you can plug this in. I know it can kind of like, this is something that I'll just explain to you guys when we actually get to the video because there's a lot that this can do. Voice and tone alerts, flexible audio device, long range. There's a whole bunch. So this will be... Yeah, you can make it say stuff and everything. It's pretty nice. So this will be a very in-depth video. I'm pretty sure when we get to that one. So I'll kind of keep be that pretty one. pretty cool. Keep that one for you guys. Then we have the temperature humidity sensor. This is an indoor sensor. So you would just put this inside of your RV. Uh, I'd put it what, probably like body height, you know, just, yeah. you don't about want to put it too high, you don't want to put it too low. About just, the same height as your thermostat. Yeah, so, yeah, body height, chest height. Uh, this will tell you the inside temperature, and it'll also tell you your humidity. This is very important in an RV, because if your hum uh, humidity gets a little bit too high, you'll start to notice that your windows will condensate. It's just all downhill. You want to keep moisture out of your RV. And what's really nice about these is, since you can set kind of commands and, uh, you know, things like that nature. If this temperature falls below a certain amount that you set, you can have a siren go off. You can have it communicate with any of the other products to kind of, you know. It's good if you have animals, because you know, if you leave for the day or something, animals in there and something's wrong, it's too hot, you can have that handled. Yeah, so as you were saying, if you're not there, if it gets like, let's say for us, if it was above like 85 degrees, my sensor would go off. And at that point I would know like, okay, I have my AC set for 72. There's no reason it should be getting that hot so you know I could go home and things of that nature. There's so much more and what I really love about Yolink is they're constantly making new products. So it's actually really exciting to kind of follow them because who knows what the future has for them as in what they're doing. <laughs> and then lastly, for safety, we have a smoke and carbon monoxide alarm right here. This is kind of like a two piece. We have the wireless communication base and then we have the smoke alarm. Uh, you do have smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms in your RV, but it is nice to have the Yolink one because that way when you're not actually home, you'll actually get the alert or you can have a siren go off along with the alarm, just a wide range of things you can do. So with that being said, this is only a small array of some of the things they have there. There's a whole bunch more. Pretty excited to show you guys. Make sure you check out their website if you're interested in any of these and actually see some of the things that they're putting out. So, yeah, you won't be disappointed. So, wh which one are we going to do first? I think we're going to do these two over here. We're going to install a nice contact sensor uh, for the what storage bay? Yeah, we'll do one of the storage bays. Just one for the storage bay. Another thing I would say, guys, if you want, you could put one of these probably in your propane bay. I would say that just because there's no lock on a propane bay because it's kind of illegal. You're not supposed to have it on there from the factory. They don't put it on there for safety reasons. So, to have one of these, it would be nice to know, like, if your propane door opened and you're just like, well, why is it opening? Like, <laughs> crazy. And then we'll also install a weatherproof temperature and humidity sensor, maybe one or two. It is going to get cold tonight, so this will probably be nice to actually tell what, the, yeah. the temperature down there. So we'll start with these. Uh, in the video later on, I will give you guys a breakdown of on your mobile device, kind of how to what you'll see when you're installing some of these products. And if you guys are interested in seeing, like, setting up a hub, which is very straightforward when you set it up. I mean, you could probably have this thing completely set up in five minutes. 
we can. Uh, yeah, everything's got go. the barcode. You just scan and it, it'll add it to your. Uh, your yeah, yeah hub. once you have your account made and your hub's all hooked up, every one of these products will just have that code. You just scan it with your phone right through the app, and it will just connect add, it for you. Yeah, add the device. So this is very simple. But if you guys are interested, we're more than happy to make a rundown. But I will show you in the app what you're going to see when you're connecting these sensors, and what it will show you from your home page in the app. So you can actually see like what the temperature is, if anything's detecting water, be able to actually see the sensors, things of that nature. So let's uh, let's get it going. Let's hop into it. Whoa. Hey everybody. So we are in the door of the storage bay down here. Got a bunch of stuff in here, but we're gonna be installing the contact sensor. So I'm just gonna give you guys a quick opening box. One thing I wanted to say when I noticed this. You do have the QR code for a user guide, so it's always cool because you can get the manual right on your phone. You don't have to. Uh, plus, it comes with one. Yeah, well, we'll see. Shh, don't, don't, be, don't be spoiling it. So opening the box right now, we have some instruction manual, like a quick guide setup. Please note, before you begin, quick side guide intended for initial overview setup requirements. Please download the full installation user guide by scanning the QR code below. So this is a quick install guide, so it's not all the directions, but... Pretty good, explains everything you need to do. How to install it, install batteries, screws, uh, 3M tape. So we'll just go farther into the box now. It does come with batteries. Oh, let me get that off of there, magnetic. It does come with batteries, which is nice. So it's not one of those products where batteries yeah, not included. You, you have the sensor, which let me stick these two together if I can. No, whatever unwrap this up a little bit so this is the cable that will attach to we figured out how we're going to install it we're probably going to like hook it right into this side because there's a nice metal uh, lip right here so we can have one stick to there and then we'll put one on the door that's behind me once we line it up we'll be good to go and we should be set then this device right here uh we there's a few options i mean we're gonna put some 3m tape on there and just stick it right inside of here yeah up to the bottom because the wall does have carpet so it won't stick you as You could great. Velcro it to, the, to there, but I think up on one of the studs up top would I mean, be even if you really wanted to and you didn't want to drill or put anything, I mean, we have a, a gap right here that just hangs. You could just hang that baby Set right over. over. Yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't really matter, but professional-wise, we want to just 3M it so it's out of the way and we don't accidentally click the set button, anything of that nature. So I'm going to... I'll open it for you guys so you can see. If you open it in here, we have the battery hookup, and we also have that QR code we were talking about for installing it into your app. So as we're saying, once it's hooked up, it's going to be as simple as going into the app, uh, scanning it, and boom, it'll be added right to our account, and we'll be good to go. So close this up. It does come with screws. We have four screws right here, which will be for screwing in the actual sensor part, uh, one for each side. I'll pull up that other sensor. Two holes right there as well. So you're all good there. And then it does come with some 3M double-sided tape which is fantastic, so we can actually mount this. Uh, we're probably going to 3M tape these, I'm thinking. Yeah, it's, why not? Uh, just because I think screwing into like metal, it's just going to be a pain. So we'll try the 3M approach. It should work perfectly fine for what we're trying to do. And that is everything that is in the box. So we're all set there. So as you see, they included everything that you need. You got your batteries, some instructions, 3M tape, screws, the sensor. So we are going to install it here, so we'll show you guys. I do want to say that this is one position you can install it but as i was saying the propane side you can put one there or in the other side door uh you can set conditions i want you guys to know so like let's say we were to set this so when it opened a siren would go off, uh, go off we don't want that to happen every time but we can set conditions to be if we left the house and a certain something was activated this sensor would activate so if it were to open the siren would go off and then we could deactivate it when we got back home so that's why for me, when I'm installing it, I'm definitely going to probably install one of these in my propane door because there's really no reason I should be opening that unless I'm checking something or somebody's opening it and not supposed to be. But and you like, could shut these off in the app if you're not, like if you're at your rig all the time, but when you leave, you can just activate it. Yeah, it's up to you if you were going to leave long term. Uh, I know they do have little control, like key fobs, almost like, um, I mean, I got one in my pocket, but... Like it's just a nice key fob and you can actually activate stuff through your key fob. It's like commands through the app, which would be nice. So I could press that key fob and this sensor could activate. So that way if 
this door were to open when I had it activated, it'll set my siren off or use my speaker hub and have a voice command. So things like that. Like, Please step away from the RV door. <laughs> Anything you want. So let's uh, get to installing this. All right, so I had him run inside and get some alcohol so we can easily uh, wipe off the spot. Uh, before you throw him tape, always try to wipe off the thing. You don't want any oil, grease, or dirt stopping the, the bond. So one thing we wanted to show, we did put the batteries in this device. It hasn't been hooked up to the app yet. We'll show you guys in a minute connecting it to his app. But we did want to show you, because we were testing it. I'm trying to set this somewhere so you can easily see it. So right down here, there's a little display light that will turn red. So I'll give you guys You're a... probably going to have to turn the light off for them to see that. Okay. Click it on off. Okay, cool. So I'm going to put these two together. So you'll, you should see it blink red. I put them to, see how yep. it blinked red? Okay, and then it stops blinking when they're together. So when you pull them apart, it will blink red again. So we were testing uh, how close they could come before the light would turn on, just to kind of get, see. So we were good. There's a good, decent gap there, and it was still activated. So that's good. So just in case your door doesn't have the perfect seal or you're a little bit off, you should be good to go and it will still activate the way you need to. So since I showed you guys that, I'm just going to wipe this off, attach it to the ceiling up here, and then we will bust into connecting to the app and uh, be good to go. Yeah. Awesome. So let's get to it. All right. He just wiped off the back of the sensor thing and up here where we're going to mount it. We decided to go with the command strips, the hook and loop type, so we can take it down as we needed to, make battery changing easier or whatever. Yeah, so nothing's wrong with the 3M tape if you know you're going to have it permanent, but actually having this out here is just nice because, you know, to change batteries, we can actually pull the whole thing off and we don't yeah. have to, like, be reaching up here and trying to put batteries in and out. So it's just optional, but something you guys can do, so we figured we would mention it in here. So Plus, you know, how... You know, command strips are like a RVer's best friend. Yeah, you're, you you're, 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 you're going to be using these all the time. And depending on what ones you get, are very, very good. Like these heavy duty ones, when they stick together, they stick. Like you could hear that click in there. And there's no like falling off of that. You really got to be. Try to get a little, yeah. yeah. It's, it's got some grip. So yeah, it'll do especially exactly uh, well. vertical shear force. So I'm going to connect it to the tape. Oh, geez, connect yeah. it to the sensor real quick since I clean this off. I'll let that wipe that off quick to want it to be wet. And I just made it more. We're going to get this mounted and then we'll show you guys uh, how we got it lined up over here and then how to work it in the app or how to add it to the app. Perfect. All right, everybody. So we got everything installed the way we wanted to do it here. We have the sensor in position. We use 3M tape to put in the sensor because we just really didn't want to screw it into the seal part for where this is. So depending on where you're putting this, feel free to use the screws that were included. I highly recommend to always make sure you use stainless screws on anywhere that can get wet. So since this is all set, the cable runs up and we have the device right up here. We use the command strips, which is nice because we can completely take these off if we need to. But we also, since it's Velcro, can pull the whole thing off if we want. So as you see here, I'll open this up for you. If you open it, we have nice easy access to our batteries. I mean, the set button's right there, which you can do while this is closed. And then we also have the QR code to hook it up. So I'll show you all that. Actually, I'll leave this open so we can get ready to connect to the app. But I also wanted to show you on the door right here. This is where we chose to put it. Uh, when we showed you the light before, you do have a little bit of wiggle room. Try to get it as close as you possibly can, but we're lined up very good, so we should be all set. So our next step is to set it up to the app, which we will show you guys, and we'll see... Uh, how the sensor works. So we have the YoLink app set up right now uh, and we're already into it. So this is our active like homepage of YoLink. Uh, you also can set rooms, which is really cool in the top left you see there. But this is all the sensors that we currently have attached to it. And you also can change the actual names of sensors, which is something we want to include. So it's not like sensor one or two. You can actually write the location. Very intuitive. When we actually get to setting up some of these sensors, we will give you guys a more in depth. So right now we're going to be adding a new product. Boom. Top right here gives us our QR code. So I'm just going to find the QR code up there. Scanned it. Perfect. It's telling us door sensor. We can change the name. Do you want this anything fancy? Yeah, right side. Right, right side? Yeah, right side door sensor. <laughs> you know what happens. Big fingers, little buttons. My hands are cold. Right side door sensor. Capital S. Uh, 
good save we have that room we're just gonna set it or we're just gonna leave it because we don't need anything fancy and we're gonna bind the device you can also put this on your option screen if you want device is online initial configuration we're all done here we can see the right side door open sensor it's showing us the exclamation point which we're it says it's open opened right now so while we're in the app we're just going to close the door we'll show you guys on video but we're closing the door now and it says closed so open the door and it says open perfect so we'll kick back to the video and show you guys uh the door opening and closing actually you can do it right now actually just start, start recording our door is open as you see i'm just gonna have him scooch to the side you might guys might be able to hear my alarm go off inside yep so close and it's closed. Uh, the alarm is siren, but it's set for a certain amount of time. So that siren will shut off in a second. But that's why we're saying there's a lot to do within the app to actually set everything up how you want it. Yeah, that's one of the other items we didn't quite show you, but we could show you later is the siren that you can hear. We mentioned it. So that basically sums up everything in the app. There you go. You have yours for a while. I got mine 10 seconds. And we're all set. 10 seconds ain't long enough for me to get up. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear it, it's enough to wake me up and I go, uh-oh. Cool. But that's it. That was an easy install on that one. That's what I'm saying. That was, and it worked pretty, pretty nice. That was pretty good. So let's find a spot to hang that one uh, outdoor temperature and humidity sensor. Well, I think first things first, we probably should mess with the siren so it doesn't alert when this opens because it's going to drive you oh, we crazy. We can, yeah, but that's... That's later. We'll, we'll get to that. There's a lot to show you guys within the app, which we'll either make a complete separate video for to kind of show you some of the things you can tinker with and set certain kind of conditions. So if this opens, the alarm goes off, it closes, the alarm stops. There's a lot you can do and they're always updating the app. So if you're in the app and find something that would make it operate a lot better or you run into a bug, seriously, just message their team. They get back to it really fast and do updates regularly. So it's pretty good to go. Right. What I think is cool too is that they do have that valve thing you can put on your water. Yeah. So if you, it does detect a leak, you can have it shut off the water to your rig. So yeah, or when I was talking too. about that remote, you could when you're about to leave your RV, if you know you're going to be gone for a weekend, press the button, it'll automatically shut the water off to your RV. So awesome. there's a whole bunch you can do. It's actually pretty exciting. It, <laughs> actually it is upgrading trying to play Upgrading each kind it, yeah. of thing and getting everything how you want it. So we'll uh, disable the alarm quick so we can open this again because I left the sensor in there. So, so the next thing we're going to do in this video before we wrap it up is going to be installing a weatherproof temperature and humidity sensor. So these things long range, up to 1,000 feet in open air, real time monitoring, extended battery life. What's really cool with these kind of things is you don't have to put batteries into it, but extended battery life up to two years battery life due to unique low power uh, or long range communication. So this is kind of like a put it in place and forget it. You don't have to sit here and be like, oh, gotta change the battery in a few months. You're, you're good <laughs> for, a long, for a long time. The water sensors work the same way. Yeah, and we've had those, what, you're a year. Over I haven't year, even yeah. seen it go, the battery go down on mine. So open in the box, we have Yolink Weatherproof. So just the quick startup guide. I think these will be the same like the other one. I bet you they will have a, uh, a QR code to get the full thing. Yep. Perfect. Before we get the quick, but yep. they're so simple, I, I don't even see you need anything else. <laughs> I yep. mean, it's really simple. It tells you about the hub. As we're saying, you'll need a hub to use all of these. So that will be the number one thing you'll have to get. But... They do come in kits, so don't, don't so worry. So if you are doing it for RVs, we recommend that water sensor kit comes with the hub. That's your first start, I That's think. That's a good start. But as we go, we'll probably kind of share with you guys kind of like a beginning starter kit that will be good. Yeah. And then we'll kind of show you like the next level up. And then by the end, we'll have you like your ultimate smart home package, the things that we think you should get. And from our videos, to see where we're putting them to give you an idea of, you know, if it's going to be for used you. for your application. Because depending on the size of your RV, what's yours, 40 foot? 43 feet. You have a lot more spaces to put water sensors, depending if you have a half bath or a, a washer dryer. Yeah. You might want one in that area in case it starts leaking. So depending on which, but. So this right here is the sensor. It's got like a little little hook right there. I guess you could just hang it on something. If you wanted to hang it somewhere, yeah. Uh, kind of actually shows you so you know temperature. Cool. It's got a little opening there opening on the bottom so we definitely don't want to block these but it would be hanging anyway rotate to the back it does have little feet so you know it's not you completely could set resting it flat. On. yeah you could set it just like that it has the set button like all the other uh devices will have the set button and then you have your qr code to be able to add it to your link account so again pretty straightforward um we already did a little thinking of where we want to put it so with these right here these are outdoor but we want to 
put it under the RV so we can tell the temperature outside. Just if it's getting too close to freezing, we don't want our pipes to freeze. So we know like if this is showing us it's 28 underneath the camper, we probably should turn the heat on or yeah. turn on your uh, heated hose, things of that nature. And you don't want it in direct sunlight either. Yeah, because it'll raise the temperature, you'll get a false reading. So those are the two things. Somewhere where it's not really affected by water that much, because, I mean, if you get water on it too, your, your humidity is going to be all jacked. Uh, no sunlight, just so you actually get the true temperature. Um, there's a whole bunch of things you could also do too, depending on where you want it to mount it, into your RV. Uh, not in your RV, outside of your RV. You can make a little box around it if you wanted. There's a whole bunch you could do, a box with holes in it if you didn't want anything to hit it, debris. But for us, since we're stationary right now, we're just gonna show you guys where we're gonna put this one. We do have other ones which we'll adjust. Uh, we do want something like this in the storage bay, but we might go for an indoor one that has it so we can actually visually, uh, visually read the temperature. Cause in the storage bay, it's not gonna rain in there, but <laughs> rain, get wet. Uh, we also can tell the humidity in the storage bay. In the storage bay, will usually stay a little bit warmer than underneath the RV. So that way, you know, if you put anything in there that's liquid that you don't want to freeze, depending on where you are. So let's uh, mosey on over here real quick and show them where we have. So we have a spot right here that we found. Uh, I'll actually mosey on down here. So right down here, we have this spot right here. You can, I mean, we could command strip it right to the side here, which will work good. So you can take it off before you were to move if you want, but I think depending on how you mount it, so like with that command strip we were talking about, that's got very good, like, I trust that. That like, yeah, holds heavy, yeah. Holds pretty good. So we could clean this off, put it on each side. That way we can take this off if we need to or feel like we need to take it off. But that way if we close the slide in, we're also going to have space. It's not going to crush it or anything like that. So it could technically stay there. Yeah, we, so yeah, if you're traveling, but if, if you, you if to. you don't feel comfortable with it, if we, by using like the command strip, uh, by using like the command strip, you also can take it off. That way, it'll still be stuck here, but you'll have your command strip on the back when you park where you need. Stick it, you're good to go. Plus, using the command strip allows us to leave this like we're not setting it on the bottom. We can just stick it right there, and then we'll we'll be good to go. Uh, good part about this. No, no water is going to hit this, and sunlight usually doesn't get to this part, especially no, depending where you're parked. Especially with the awning open. Awnings and everything, you'll be good. So this will give us our true temperature. So. Well, for the sake of this, we'll just set it on the rail there, on its side, just like that. That should do it, right? Yeah, for this. But do you do you want to command strip it on there? Just Not right now. It? We'll do it for the right sake now? of this because I might move it to the left or right. Make oh, sure. Oh, depending on where exactly yeah. you want it. Yeah, because you have whole frame. Let me grab this from you. You have whole frame. I mean, you could completely go anywhere along this if you really wanted to. So the option's up to you, but I definitely think we are going to go with a command strip to stick to wherever we want to. But on don't the stick it until you scan that barcode because it's on the back. Yeah, but so we'll, we'll show you guys that in a second. We'll switch over to the phone to show you the setup. Again, super simple. It's just like the other one. And then once we have that all set up, we'll adjust where we're going to put this and we'll be good to go. I mean, if I could, you know, if you remember, we don't move a lot, but if you did and if you remembered, you could just, you know, hang it from that little piece there so it's free hanging. Uh, what little piece? Up top, that frame part up here. We could put a little uh, oh, a magnet or yeah, something. Yeah, a magnet or a screw and just actually let it free hang yeah, free so it's hang. not touching this either. Right, and get maybe some uh, yeah, off a little, a little for the metal cold. Yeah, holding it better because you do have little feet, so it's technically holding it away, but, you know, it's still going to give you a little bit of temperature. Yeah, so there's so many options of things you can do. So let's jump to the app, hook it up, and we'll play with it so you guys can actually see it in the app, the temperature. So we are back in our Yolink uh, application right now, right at home. So we have the sensor out in front of us. You guys can't really see it right now, but we're just going to click in the top right corner, that little box with the line through it. That should pull up our camera. So you actually will see the sensor. One second. Hand so cold, wasn't even registering. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was so fast. <laughs> it even scanned it. Wow, that quick. Wow, that was that was fast. That's pretty amazing. Pretty good here. So do you want to set any different name or anything like that? Is a temp humidity? You want outdoor temp, maybe? Yeah, outdoor temp sensor. Let's name it that. Ooh. Outdoor temp humidity sensor. That works. So you, you get both. Room not set. We don't need it. Favorite. That doesn't matter. Let's bind the device. Device bound. This device is offline. Press the set button once. If the device is battery supplied, it will join the internet automatically in 20 seconds. 
if it's still offline. So I'm just going to press that set button that was on the back of the device real quick. So we just click done here, and as you see in the bottom right corner, we have our outdoor temp humidity sensor. We're inside at the moment because it's a little chilly out there, so <laughs> to set it up, we were doing it. Yeah, so it's still that outside temperature right now. What's really nice, too, this also shows you the time and the date that it was recently updated. Uh, it's usually not like every minute. It'll lapse a few minutes, but still, it's enough where you're going to get all the information you need. You have history, charts, things of that nature. So we're going to go set this in this uh, position, and uh, it's basically all set. You're, you're good. You just head back to your home. And as you see, I mean, we have a variety of different things, but there's so much you can add into here. I mean, this page could just keep going and going with things, yeah. depending on what you actually want to track. But it's just that peace of mind you get. I mean, you'll know the outside temperature. You'll know if you have any leaks. You'll know if your doors are open. There's, there's a whole bunch. So guys, to have this a little bit more permanent of a spot for what we want to do for hanging it before we actually mount it. Maybe we'll do another video if we actually want to mount or make a, a nice little box for it or something. Yeah, but. what we decided to do is we're just going to put a stainless steel screw right through here. We got the self-tapping stainless steel screw. We're just going to put it in here and have it hang so our sensor can free hang. That way it gets equal air all the way around it. Yeah, good idea. So let's do that. Just like that, quick and simple. Okay. Perfect, nice free hanging, so it's not touching any metal, so we'll get a nice accurate reading of actual Again, if you guys are moving around a bunch, you might want to more permanently hang that, but since we're permanent, or we're here most of the time, we'll just have it hanging. Just remember to move it if you yeah, need Yeah, one to. thing we'll say, just put it on your quick uh, checklist. Your moving the RV checklist. Well, everybody, that sums up this first video of our mini Yolink series. We got the outside temperature set up, and we also have a door sensor, which is... Pretty nice. Yeah, they're, they're steps in the right direction for turning your RV camper fifth wheel into a smart home. Yeah, my, my, like I said, my biggest thing in the beginning was the water because I know water kills these rigs quicker really than anything. Fast, so yeah. I wanted to make sure I had water sensors everywhere I could put them. Yes. And that started me out on converting over everything smart. Then you started adding things as you go. So the water sensors were the first for us. And then that temperature humidity sensor, definitely. Like I have yeah. one. I don't think you have one. No, right I don't now. have one yet. Yeah, well, so, I do now. Yeah, <laughs> look it up. But I have one of these. Knowing the humidity in the RV, very important to kind of keep condensation off the walls. You want to track that pretty good. So this thing is great. And you also don't have to look in your app to see the temperature. I mean, you just set this by a thermostat or something, you're going to get the temperature right. without having to log in. The outdoor ones, Sure, we don't see what the temperature is on it, but you just look into the app quick and can take a look. And as we were saying before, you can hook up conditions. So if it hits a certain temperature, I can have it set off the alarm and I can tell myself like, okay, if I hear this alarm go off, you know, it might be a water sensor or it will tell you on your phone, you get a notification. Yeah, what but it is. like, okay, that underneath the RV hit 31 degrees. Now it's time to crank on the furnace and plug in a heated, uh, heated that, hose. Yeah. yeah, so there's so much, so much to look at, so much to get to add into your rig. So it's it's pretty exciting. They have a whole bunch. You can head to their website, uh, check, really check it out. And again, we'd like to thank Yolink for kind of giving us the opportunity to kind of showcase some of their products to you guys and kind of let you see the full-time RV kind of smart home. Because yeah, everybody thinks yeah, smart home being yeah. residential, but like yeah. there is a large group of people nowadays that are full-time oh, RVs. Yeah, yeah. So this will give you that side of it. It's, I mean, you might not have thought about it, but. And one thing I do want to add is a lot of, like all of these use Wi-Fi for your hub, but there are certain devices, relays, things we can do yeah. where we can still have it communicate with each other if in case that Wi-Fi were to run out or you didn't have a hotspot. So they're completely not useless without internet. So we will cover that in some of the upcoming videos, but just something I want to have you guys keep in mind because full-time RVing, Wi-Fi can be a pain. Depending can, on yeah. depending where you are, whether or not if you're at a resort that has it, if you have cell phone signal for We do have a video for that. We'll try to leave something here we'll, on Wi-Fi. In we'll, we'll throw some stuff together. But this was the first of the videos. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the 
thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Yeah, that bell notification. Really it's the cool. algorithm thing, you know, they talk about it all the time. So <laughs> we're trying to work with that. And if you have any comments on any of the devices, well, at least the ones we covered today. I mean, if you have a quick one here, we can we can answer what we got so far, but maybe you want to wait to the next video that actually highlights that. But we'll answer any questions you guys got. Uh, if you do have a question that we don't know the answer to, we will directly contact YoLink and get any information that we can to answer your question for you. And we'll leave links to this stuff, to them, everything right down below so you can check out and see what they do have. And then, it, like you said, if they do have questions on setting it up or anything, you can, I mean, they have a lot of resources on their site to help mm -hmm. you. If not, hit us up. We'll contact them, whatever we need to do to get you guys set up. But before you uh, ask for too much help, make sure you hit that QR button to get the full manual for your product. Yeah, that's, it, that's why I said the resources they have. I have looked at some of the manuals and they are long and explain everything good. The little instructions that come with it is just a quick startup. Just remember that before you're like, oh, this, this isn't working. Or Chances are. You'll, you'll figure it out. There might be a video for it. I mean, I'm, we're, we're video uh, sensitive, so we yeah. like the videos. They help. Right. So I think that sums it up. Again, yeah. we want to thank YoLink for this opportunity. We can't wait to make some more. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Anything yeah. else you want to add no, in there? Until next time, guys. Try something new. Do a little bit of everything. Whenever your heart is broken